Nerd Nerd Hurdles. Welcome to Nerd Hurdles. The podcast that uh, helps you overcome your geek prejudices with Snark. My name is Jacob. Your name is Mandy. And Quill. <laughs> <laughs> There's just a baby here. You just have to accept it. Uh, we're going to talk about a poll we took last week. Yeah, we took a poll. Maybe we should add one more question to the poll. Is it... Our baby noise is ruining Nerd Hurdles. It's not a Nerd Hurdles poll. <laughs> it's a Star Trek poll. Okay, well, new poll. New poll. One question. Are baby noises ruining Nerd Hurdles? Why do you want to know the answer to that question? Because listenership is dropping off, and I want to know if it's because people hate our baby. Well, of course people hate our baby. <laughs> we just... It's, it's a transition period. Yes. People... We're we're going to begin appealing to a new demographic. Right. I don't think it's the baby sounds so oh. much as it's that we talk about the baby. Well, either or, yeah. Yeah, so we, well, I shouldn't say we, I should say you. I wrote a poll. You wrote a poll, uh, put it up on your own Facebook wall. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, I'll put that on Nerd Hurdles. Yeah. We got 47 responses. Which which isn't bad for. Which really is only 44. No, 45. Because of us, too. We, we, we both replied like, to our own poll. Uh, yeah. Our opinions matter, supposedly. Yeah, that was at least like 35 more responses than I expected. Hmm. People love a poll. I love a poll. People love a poll. I do a poll. People love Star Trek. Remember when People XKCD know, did that poll? The like random poll of just like crazy ass questions? Like, I... what's the first animal you think of? And... All kinds of, like, it went on and on and on, just these weird, weird questions. I kind of don't remember that. And they were meant to, like, release the results, but then they never did, and, like, <laughs> the server kept crashing. Like, so many people replied to it right. that it was, like, they couldn't do anything with it. Expansionally more popular. Than they ever thought it would be. Just like our 45 <laughs> yes. responses. Well, um, and really, I should have thought a little bit more carefully about how I crafted the questions because I wasn't really able to do stuff with the data that I, uh, that you're hoping to. Yeah. That's a learning curve. Do we doing data mm -hmm. gathering? I mean, there's people at my work and that's, that's what they do. Mm -hmm. They mine well, data. And and, and I did do a, it yeah. in university a little bit. It was part yeah. of my geography degree, but, uh, that was a long time ago. It was a long time ago and it wasn't using Google forms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You have to know like how I, it's going to give me back. Them. Yeah. 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 To rephrase, we posted an imperfect poll an imperfect on Star poll. Trek, about Star Trek. Uh, I mean, the data's still here. Yeah. It's just, I can't make charts out of it like I wanted to. Well, right. I don't know how. It sort of generated some for you, though. Yeah, some yeah. for sure. Yeah, which, yeah. Were, which were interesting enough. So we're going to yeah, talk interesting about Interesting to look at. Uh, so what was this poll about? It was about uh, basically who people are and it, what, Star Trek, what they like about Star Trek, what Star Trek they like, what they don't like. And this started off from... A question you had was that... Do more women like Voyager? Out of the people that think Voyager is the best, is it mostly women? Mm -hmm. And I, my supposition going into this was, and the people that think DS9 is best are all dudes because right. it feels like a very masculine-oriented show. It's right. kind of its worldview is kind of much more... Uh, it's the most masculine out of dude, all of Star Trek. Dude-centric. Yeah, it's the most dude-centric. And then just anecdotally, it's like, I've never heard a woman say, yeah, DS9, that's definitely the best. And it's always been a dude who's, who's said that. Right. But. So, you want to know if mostly men like D Space Nine. I will our two theories, if, there is, if our data shows any indication of uh, our theories being borne out. Okay, so of the women who responded, three women said that Deep Space Nine was the best. Wow. And uh, how many people, are you able to see how many people said Deep Space Nine was the best in total? 13 people said Deep Space Nine was the best. Right. So, and, uh, the, about, and of our respondents, yeah. about 30% of respondents were women and 60%. 65% were men. 5% were... Gender fluid, gender queer is the other oh, one that we had right, respondents. Because right. you had all those. Well, I had... I, I, I realized the... I probably shouldn't have made gender fluid, gender queer one category. Right. Because people don't usually... Anyway, I should have, have made it separate. Have that much of a choice in a, in, a, but, uh, in a survey. No one picked other. I refuse not to answer. Was that one of them? Uh, someone did, did not answer. But So it is a, about a quarter 
of Deep Space Nine respondents was women. And what about Voyager? Um, how many women said they liked that one, you mean? Yeah. Only two women said it was best. Wow. So more women said that Deep Space Nine was best yeah. than Voyager. And how many people in total said Voyager was their favorite? Uh, five. <laughs> so almost nobody liked Voyager. Yeah, it's kind of sad because the original series, eight people said it was the best. Next Generation was the big winner with 17. As expected. But I can't believe how high Deep Space Nine is. Yeah. And how much people hate Enterprise. I, I feel like a lot of people didn't even watch Enterprise as well, though. And they're just saying it's the worst without having watched it? Well, because when you had to rank them from best to worst. And you didn't have to. Well, I mean, but it looks like you have to in the way. It, it looks It looks like you're being asked to do that. Then, yeah. I mean, it was my second worst. I don't necessarily think it is bad. You know, like I still, it definitely has some, some of the worst episodes in Star Trek or in Enterprise, I think. Right. But overall, I enjoyed it as a, as a series, it turned out. But yeah, when you're ranking it fourth out of five, then... Three people rated it second best, though. Like, I think maybe yeah. that's actually more surprising than how many people hated it. Yeah. I'm not Second su- best. I'm not surprised people hated it at all I just because know of the, the theme song. I want to know what the people who said it was second best yeah. picked as their favorite. I'm guessing TOS or 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 um TNG. Uh TNG TNG and TOS. Yeah. I mean in some ways I think Enterprise is better than TOS, but TOS has like some some deep seated nostalgic meaning for me. So I couldn't I couldn't put it in the top two, but I I, I, I kind of had to put place it as my third choice because well it's hard to you know none of the other ones would exist if it wasn't for that one. Well, there's that as well, and it it really did for its time. It it did some pretty impressive things, and a lot of things came out of it. It just as far as the way space adventures were made and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, even though it's a completely different kind of thing, Star Wars came out of the that kind of space adventure tradition. It was supposed to be more literally Flash Gordon influenced, but I mean, it's still obviously Dirge was in some way influenced by Star Trek. How could it not? Yeah, because he was making Star uh, Star Wars ten years after Star Trek. So I mean, it's like it was a big cultural thing, even even though it was kind of a failure. So, not ultimately a failure. Not ultimately, but just like in those in, three seasons yeah. when it kept getting canceled and and was instantly like a nerd thing. So we did ask what the best and worst aspects were of the shows. Yeah. And I formulated that question poorly, but it actually meant that some of the answers are pretty funny. Um, (laughs) My favorite answers are where people just said one thing and it's obviously both. Answers. Both answers. So a popular answer for the original series is is the cheese. Yeah. The cheese factor. Yeah. The the banter. (laughs) Best Spock, worst sexism. A lot of this is saying the worst is the sexism or the racism. Interesting how it, like, all these attempts to promote tolerance and inclusivity, but they didn't really work. <laughs> the worst is the sexism, but it's also the funniest. The best is the social messages. Like, it's interesting, like, how it is the best and the worst, kind of. The worst is the lighting. <laughs> the lighting is bad. <laughs> When they light Kirk with uh, the, just the narrow, his eyes with the narrow yeah. band of light, that's always good. The peering through the oven light? Yeah. <laughs> Here they have Kirk as the best and the worst. The camp and the camp. Yeah, I'd say that's probably, you know, very clearly the best and the worst thing about the original series is is yeah. that cheese and camp. And uh, the sexism isn't uh, a good part of it, but it's, it's part of the camp part of it is the sort of Benny Hill women in their skivvies all the time it's of the time like i yeah. don't think it makes it okay but it was sort of uh early sexual liberation stuff where they're like hey it's okay to be sexy you know right like, when uh for a lot of this stuff in sort of late 60s now we look back and it's like totally exploitative sexual exploitation and uh, but you know at the time it was meant as don't be repressed mm-hmm. 50s anymore like show your sexuality Basically, all that ended up meaning was, like, be sexy for the male gaze. Right, which is, I guess, a step. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it's a step forward or not, but a step. Although there was there was George Dickey with an oiled chest. Yeah, in that also one for the male gaze. <laughs> Another subsection of... 
The, the male viewership. Yeah, yeah, the the male gaze gaze. Yeah, the gaze gaze. The gaze gaze. Let's look at the best and worst things of Star Trek The Next Generation. Best Picard, worst Will Wheaton. Yeah. Best camaraderie and idealism, worst. Oh, you wrote this. Jordy Riker and other MRA role models. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, not anonymous. <laughs> Wow, I didn't write this. Uh, best, greater nuance to the complexities of space travel and galactic possibilities. In retrospect, I had a pretty big crush on Will Wheaton. I guess that's the worst and the best. I don't know. <laughs> um, where did it go? Oh, this is a good one for both. Wesley's lip wedding. <laughs> the his, best his and lip? the worst. That's some ASMR for you. Make a whole ASMR video of Wesley's lip wedding. You can do You can do a super cut. Definitely, there's a lot of best Picard worst wesley kind of yeah um, that's that's a pretty standard almost predictable answer really and this is interesting i've seen a few where people are saying the worst thing is that there wasn't character development there wasn't an arc right which is interesting because i guess compared to you know enterprise or deep space nine there wasn't an arc but yeah that was there wasn't arcs on tv then and i felt like there was an arc and there was character development and there wasn't there wasn't like a um big plot arc Mm -hmm. uh but there was definitely character development like data has a has a very very much a character's journey yeah when you watch the first couple uh seasons with picard where he's like grumpy old man picard and then by the time you get to season seven in the movies he's like a very different character Mm -hmm. he's gone from being standoffish with the crew and a bit of an asshole to being you know beloved grandpa picard that everybody loves but that's not what he was like at the beginning and Mm -hmm. and deanna goes from well here's from having an accent to just talking normally well she sort of still has a bit of one but yeah you're right (laughs) this is a good one the best is data's exploration of humanity Riker and troy's real friendship in between their romantic relationships Lots of anti-prejudice stories. And then the worst is all the terrible stories about Troy and Crusher's shitty romantic decisions. Which, it's true. Yeah. They just keep having these horrible things befall them. And then Jordy's uh, nice guy syndrome. Yeah. But I mean, uh, all of Riker's... There's a lot of plots no. that are Riker's bad romantic decisions. Not a couple, but he just gets to bone a lot of people all the time. I don't or think he you, does. Okay, but think, that's the perception you're meant to have. But yeah, well, it's just because he... They tell you. They tell you, but he, he doesn't actually... I don't know. I, I guess I'm just thinking of like Minuet and a few others where like Riker's libido gets the whole ship into trouble. Yeah. At, at the same time, you're right. There's sort of like the double standard. Where it's sort of like, oh, stupid Beverly Deanna kind of made bad relationship decisions, whereas the Riker thing is like, oh, I guess, I guess that turned out a little bit poorly for the lad. You know, it's sort of like it's always oh, thinking with his his little brain again. <laughs> yeah, it's sort of like yeah, it's not quite painted in quite the same. It's like a boys will be boys as opposed yeah. to like poor, stupid, desperate Deanna. Beverly and Deanna. Yeah. And icky. Why are the sex scenes so icky? Not that they're... Ooh, remember when Debanon Ral is, like, oil rubbing Deanna's foot? <laughs> I have to tell you that, like, that probably kept me a virgin in high school. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. That's, that's, that's... <laughs> I was like, ew, that's what you have to do? I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not something you have to do. I know that now. Yeah. What do you, what, we don't have to do that. <laughs> um, the worst thing is that there's no Leonard Nimoy. Must be in at least one episode. The best thing is everything. The worst thing is the suburban looking sets. <laughs> <laughs> there is a lot of like every time they go to a... Uh, like a small a, town college or something. Every planet sort of looks like a cheap Miami resort kind of oh, or something yeah. like that. And there's a lot of potted plants in TNG. The, and a the, lot of like corporate sculpture like if ikea sold sculptures that's what they would be like yeah it's a kind of mall like it's all very clean oh yeah. this person said the worst is alexander that's true he's definitely the worst of the the spawn star trek spawn utopian future is best troy's mother is the worst <laughs> it's pretty bad yeah this person says uh the best is the acting the stories the sense of community and duty i I, I definitely found the sense of community was something that really yeah. appealed to me, like as a young person watching TNG. It is one of the universal things about TNG that that people are drawn to. Is that yeah that there's that not f- a lot of drama between the people. Like they're working together, no. and and you know they work out problems, and they don't 
They're not yeah. backstabbing each other and shit like that all the time. Yeah, it's, it's like a family. Mm-hmm. It's like the family you have in like uh, university or something too. So if you're mm-hmm. watching TNG while you're in university, it's all, it's very familiar and it's very like this is this is how I would like it to be because I don't actually like my friends as much as these people like each other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Or something like that. But then also, like, there's, like, I think the people in Star Trek are appreciated for things other than, like, you know, when you're a teenager, what you see people being appreciated for, right? Like, they're appreciated for being nerds. Yeah. And that's not something you see on TV very much. No, not at all. Moving on. Okay, D Space Nine. This is my answer. I think it's good that there's, like, a black dude in charge. Yeah. It's pretty, I'm sad to say, radical. Yeah. It would play well in the black belt. Oh, yeah, we were looking at this, these maps of where different shows are popular, and there's, like, this... Thing called the Black Belt. The Black Belt, which is sort of, like, the bottom right corner sort of, of the America. Mi- the Mississippi kind of area. I guess so. Yeah, that little Louisiana, Mississippi. Yeah. And then, I don't know what, there's another area, like, sort of the other sort of bottom left corner, is that there's lots of Hispanic people there, and oh, okay. I don't remember if they had a special name for that or not. The Chili Belt. The Chili Belt. <laughs> probably not. No, I don't think so. No. It's just really interesting, like, how different shows, how that's distributed. Yeah, it's sort of like Scandal, he said, was, like, really big in the Black Belt. Yeah. And, and other shows that... I mean, I just think it surprises me that a show that like it actually Scandal... Works. Well, yeah, <laughs> but a show like Scandal, like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if this is going to sound racist or... I mean, I'm a person living in a racist society, so I think it's hard to not be racist in some ways right but it doesn't seem like a black show to me but it has a black lead but that's so so. like it's it's just so shocking to me that i guess also i might be mistaking popularity with like the black belt with lack of popularity other places like i don't know if that's necessarily the well no that's how it what how the map was yeah it just it just shocks me that that would be a reason that people wouldn't watch a show or wouldn't feel drawn to a show because of like well, a I, black female lead. I think they would, they'd feel not drawn to Scandal just because it's not a very good show in a lot of ways. No, that's crap. No, think about the shows that people watch that are not very good shows. I know, but I mean, I could say, I, I'm just saying that given the choice, it's one that I could see people not watching. Whereas if you so were. So do you know what's you really were, popular outside of that area? Uh, Duck Dynasty. Yeah. <laughs> That's a terrible show. It is a terrible show. Um, Teen Mom. Yeah. 16 and Pregnant. In fact, interestingly is, enough. White, what white people love is to shit on other white people that they think that are lower class. Than them. Uh, lower class than them. So they build I th- themselves up. I mean, obviously a lot of like Duck Dynasty types are going to watch Duck Dynasty and just be like, hey, it's a show about our peoples. You know, this is cool or whatever. And But there's going to be, there's a whole bunch of other white people who are going to be like, I'm going to watch that crazy racist show. But what you also need to know... Because it's a shit show. It's a, it's a trash fire. Is the popularity of Duck Dynasty was the show popularity, the show that most closely correlated with Trump votes. Yeah, it makes sense. And everybody didn't still in the same way. A lot of affluent people who voted for Trump, and they would like Duck Dynasty because they got to make fun of the the rednecks and the hillbillies. Well, that, and also maybe there's a lot of things in there that they agree with. Probably. But they feel like they can't say out loud, so it's like they're living vicariously through those duck people. Yeah. I mean, I mean it also, also makes sense, too, because those Duck Dynasty people are, like, super rich, and they're, like, they're like old money main uh, yachter, yacht people. What? The yacht culture people, and then they just became rednecks for the show. Really? Yeah, it's like there's pictures of them from like 12 years ago, and they're all in like the the tennis clothes and the polo shirts and the deck shoes and the white pants and sitting on the beach and and stuff. They're they're like not those people. They didn't grow up in like trailer parks and swamps, bootstrap. So bayous, bootstrap, bootstrap. (laughs) You know the the bootstrap thing where they they started from nothing and then built this duck dynasty. So even if the duck dynasty aspect is real like the business right it, they came from having money the dynasty is not duck related yeah it's duck and dynasty <laughs> yeah 
<laughs> yeah, so there's photos you can find on the internet of them being much, looking much more like Dynasty and less like Duck Dynasty. But that's like ties in totally with Trump's like right. super elite guy saying, I'm going to fight off the elite for you. Yeah. You know, so it's the same, it's the same scam. It's the same scam. It's yeah. the same scam. Yeah. Would you rather your name be Duck or Dynasty? Like as a first name? Yeah. I think having the name Dynasty would be kind of hilarious. Okay, you be Dynasty. I pick Duck. <laughs> Duck. Duck yeah. Hardy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Duck Hardy. That's a good name. Yeah. I could be on Duck Dynasty with a name like that. You could. You could be on... RuPaul's Drag Race. Dynasty would be a good Oh, drag. yeah. Dynasty's a good drag name. Yeah. I would be the, the worst drag artist, though. Oh, I would like to see you. Oh, well, I guess I have seen you in drag when you were the bearded lady for uh, Halloween that time. Yes. That I was, was the strong man. Yeah. That's, I think, our best Halloween costume. It was the best beard uh, tying in my beard into a costume. Garden gnomes were pretty good. Oh, the garden gnomes were good, too. I was the most comfortable in the hipster Santa costume. It wasn't really a costume. Well, they spray painting my beard white with the uh, the hair spray. You were more comfortable in that than in the gnome costume? The gnome costume, my gnome shirt wasn't the most comfortable. Oh, because it was like a weird polyester golf shirt. Yeah, it was super oversized, uh, yeah. athletic, polyester athletic material, yeah. Yeah. It was a bit like wearing a tent. Yeah. And about that comfortable. Yeah, but hipster Santa, I was... Just wearing your own clothes. Yeah, so it was super comfortable. Right. Did you hear about the scandal of the other hipster Santa? Now, is that what he's called? What's he called? Fashion Santa? Fashion Santa. Yeah. Did you hear about the Fashion Santa scandal? They fired him or something like that. Well, it was weird. So Fashion Santa, for those who don't know, was this guy who was like, I guess he's a model. He's a model. With like a gray beard. And he was the Santa at like one of the posh fashion-y malls in the city at Yorkdale. Yeah. And... He's tall and thin. He's and, a model. And a model, yeah. And so I guess they people did pictures with him and he donated the money to charity or something like yeah. that. Anyway, this year, they hired somebody else to be their fashion Santa. Yeah, like a different model. Yeah, yeah even like, though like the concept. idea yeah. of being... He had started it. was it. his idea. Yeah. And they patented it. Yeah, <laughs> which is crazy. Yeah. And then apparently they interviewed him on the radio and when they... I guess, reached out to Yorkdale to find out what the deal was. The people at Yorkdale were like, we would welcome the opportunity to work with Paul again, or whatever, <laughs> with Fashion Santa. Yeah. So there's some crazy shit happening there. But well, like, as if they stole Fashion Santa from him. <laughs> yeah. That's not the spirit of Christmas. No, but, I don't know, Yorkdale Mall and fashion industry, all, the, all these are things that I don't think of as being necessarily noble, charitable worlds no. per se so it's not surprising at all and i would assume without being slanderous or reliableless uh, perhaps a model that came up with the concept of fashion santa might be a bit hard to work with i'm sure models are hard to work with yeah anyway i could see there being more to the story of why they got rid of him well i suppose just like why would they not get rid like, the whole what? patenting fashion yeah. santa thing is crazy like maybe they just wanted to do that so we're like we have to get rid of him if we want to patent it so that no other mall can have it or something and it got spiraled out of control or yeah and he was like no you can't patent it it's mine and and he wasn't going to do it super uncomfortable yeah it's a sad story from all sides it's a very toronto story it is i hate the city (laughs) i love it but i hate it well at least it's just sort of your home for you yeah i grew up here yeah or for me it's just this place I ended up where I built a life. Yeah. I like my life, and I've never really fallen in love with the city. I think it's tough for people like us who are pretty introverted. Yeah. In that anywhere you go in Toronto is busy as fuck. <laughs> and it's like people are like, oh, there's so many amazing things to do in Toronto. Like, yeah, and a million other people want to do them at the same time. So we don't do any of the Toronto stuff. Like, even if you're interested in doing some of the stuff... It's gonna. It's kind of the geared towards and full of extroverts. So like, no, like but even something as simple as like going to the aquarium. The aquarium is awesome. I yeah. would like to go to the aquarium all the time. I think it'd be a great place to take a baby. Yeah. But it's gonna be fucking packed always. Yeah. And you have to drive downtown to get there and park and blah blah blah. I guess it's right by the GO station. You could. But uh, I'm exhausted just thinking about it. So it's more more stats. Okay, more right. stats. Yeah. So we were just talking about best and worst aspects. Yeah. So we're talking about Deep Space Nine. So some 
things that people have enjoyed. Quark's Bar, I'm pretty sure that's you that said that. Yeah, I'm probably the only person that's like, the best thing about Deep Space Nine is Quark's Bar, and the rest of the show, they, they should just get rid of it. It should have just been like a Cheers <laughs> type of thing. And it's <laughs> yeah. centered Star around... Star Trek Cheers. Yeah, centered around Quark's Bar, because those episodes are the ones I always enjoyed the most. Um, because they usually had nothing to do with Beige or... Well, this person or... says the best is nothing. The worst <laughs> thing is the Ferengi. <laughs> Wow. So this person says the best thing is, uh, oh, where to go? The Bajorans. Wow. Hi, Karen. <laughs> Actually, I think this is all good stuff because then it says a black captain towards the end, but yeah. I don't think they're saying that's a bad thing. So nobody's saying like the arc and the and the yes, the sort of the political intrigue and all the and the wars and stuff. That's the stuff people usually cite. Oh well, as I being wasn't. Look, I, that's so boring to me that I'm not even reading those answers. But they are there. Uh, overarching storyline, season long stories, recurring stories. Worst thing is the religious stories. Best, the moral ambiguity. Worst, the Bajoran resistance and religion. Best, the religion and torture. <laughs> the torture? I guess there's some best. good Use torture. Use static yeah. settings to explore things like religion and torture more deeply. Family. <laughs> to explore things like torture more deeply. This person's family didn't want to watch it because it was grim, they thought. Yeah, there are some grim This episodes. person says, too many annoying characters like the Ferengi. <laughs> Oh, this person says the worst is, is Kai Win. I, uh, I mean, she's she's horrible, but I thought as a character she was good. No, lots but, of people are yeah. saying the worst, Cisco and his son, uh, Jake. Yeah. Jake is a good, good solid runner-up to, to uh, Alexander. Yeah. Best Worf, worst all the seasons before Cisco shaved his head. He does seem to get more comfortable in the role after he shaves his head. The best is the wormhole giving rise to new and interesting alien life. The worst is the fucking Bajorans and their fucking faith. <laughs> See, well, the thing I think is interesting about like the religious aspects of, of Deep Space Nine is like they split in half the Jewish experience. So they you have like the the horrible Jewish stereotype, which is like the Ferengis. You're allowed to hate them. Yeah, but then like the the Bajorans is sort of they mirrored the whole like uh, World War Two uh, Jewish experience with the Bajorans and the Cardassians as the Nazis mm-hmm. and the Maquis being an actual the actual French Resistance in World War Two were the Maquis. So, I mean, it's like, obviously, let's hit you on the head with the fact that the Bajorans are the Jews slash French mm-hmm. and, and the Cardassians are the Nazis. That relates well to what this person said. They said the they like the strong political storylines and the deconstruction of the perfect federation. Um, but the worst is the unwillingness of the writers to leave the villains even partially sympathetic. So they say no real war is fought by heroes and villains. I don't know. I, I felt like Guldicott. Uh, did do more the like Gulda Hot. <laughs> did do the sympathetic villain and the the moral ambiguity in gray area villain fairly well. Uh, I like this an- this answer. Worst, Frangi. Sorry, you don't have to get us to to love an avaricious sexist culture as actually cute and fuzzy. No, endless war. How is that awesome? War is not awesome. Weird pseudo religious destiny stories. That's everything that's bad about Deep Space Nine. Apparently, yeah. I like this person. Whoever that was. You like the Ferengi. I I like the Ferengi, but I also like, I don't think they're being painted as warm and fuzzy and cute. Right. They're humorous and they're folly. Right. Tracy Chief being avaricious and and clowns. And I'm not comfortable with that. They're basically a Jewish stereotype right out of Charlie Hebdo. But I I think really what it is, I like Armin Shimmerman and Quark. I just like, I like that performance. All right. So Voyager. Best and worst, Janeway. Yeah, I agree with that. My mom says she doesn't like Janeway because she talks like a gerbil. <laughs> well, yeah, the guy that does talk like that. Well, like, have you ever had a gerbil? Ah, uh, no. They I don't haven't. talk. They don't. But a, a cartoon of a gerbil might would sound talk a... probably like could talk like Janeway, a an evil bit. gerbil maybe. Yeah. <laughs> uh, woman in charge, best low valleys. That does have some bad episodes. That's mine. <coughs> Threshold. That's what I said. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think this was mine. If it's right after mine, it is. Yeah. Least sexist Star Trek series. Overall, most consistently good writing. Worst, half the cast are terrible actors. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Paris. Tom Paris. 
Although we're, we've just started rewatching, doing he's another rewatch, bad. and he's not that bad. Harry Kim isn't bothering me. He's, you know what, though? It's because as time goes on, they get worse. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. And like Bolano is, is fine. And I was like, I remembered her being really, really, really bad. And like I think over the top. Just and, and not selling it, like not believing right. her over the top uh, behavior. And I think. And later, maybe it gets even worse in later series because she's fine. And yeah, in uh, in the first season, I, nobody's bothering me for their acting abilities in this one. Even Kess isn't bugging me that much. Oh, Kess is and really Neelix great. And Neelix isn't bugging me. Like I used to, I hated Neelix in the beginning. Yeah, but I think because he grew on me, and I ended up liking Neelix. Now, now I'm like hitting yeah. the ground running. Yeah, when, like when we him. rewatched it last time a few years ago, like I I liked Neelix from the beginning because I knew that I liked Neelix. And you were like, eh, Neelix. And then you grew to love him. But I had the same experience. It was like, no, it's Neelix. And objectively, he's pretty irritating in the first in this first season. He's always complaining. He yeah. complains a lot, and it's pretty irritating. He's very much an extrovert, which is a bit much to take. Oh, yeah. yeah. Janeway is lit up. Awesome. Probably the best captain. The whole thing is Big Gilligan's Island, though. And that was a wildly popular show. <laughs> Girl captain, yay. Too bad she's bitchy all the time. I don't think she's nearly as bitchy as either Cisco or Archer, who are just whingy bitches the whole time. Like, Archer's a bitch. Yeah, yeah, so is Cisco. No, I think she's like as as far as like if you're actually like evaluating someone's like leadership. Yeah. I think her and Picard are definitely the best. Oh, definitely. I think she's actually a better leader than Picard. Yeah, which I think I we've think, said on the podcast before. I think she's a yeah. better leader than Picard, but I don't think you can compare them because Picard never faced the leadership challenges that she faced. Exactly. Like he can just be captain in Starfleet on the flagship where really he's getting the cream of the crop. And he can get, get new cream of the crop if somebody isn't pulling their weight. Yeah. Whereas she had to take people like in their first rotation yeah. and and work with them for seven years and yeah. make them be their best. And yeah, I I don't really remember her being like bitchy ever. Like, she can be harsh and and snap at people, but she's never being bitchy. Like, bitchy is mm. a certain quality. Like, there's no petulance to to Janeway, whereas Cisco and Archer are petulant. Yeah. And I don't know how Cisco did his job ever. Like how he he got any of those people to respect him. It's but doesn't unbelievable. This, this person's comment just perfectly illustrates. Yeah. How sexism is alive and well, mm -hmm. and how you know women are the police of the patriarchy. I'm assuming that this commenter is a woman, just from saying, "Girl, Captain, yay." Maybe, maybe not. Okay, well, yeah. even if it isn't, yeah, which I doubt it. I don't think there's really very many dudes out there being like, "Oh, yay, a girl captain." Yeah, that that's what they would say is the best thing about Voyager with an exclamation point. Anyway, the point yeah. I was making doesn't really matter about who said it. Is um. You know, that in the next thing to say that she's bitchy is totally that perception of female leadership. Being bossy as opposed mm -hmm. to the boss. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, this person says the imagination rivals TOS and the worst is the premise. The imagination in TOS, other than being like coming up with a concept from episode to episode, not that imaginative, I would say, with uh, the original series. Honestly, I kind of think the animated series is better. The animated series... Which we didn't include in this poll. I've actually, well, the thing I like about it is being half hour episodes mm. in a way that is, the, those hour long episodes of the original series sometimes feel like an hour. Yeah. Like they really feel like an hour. There's like a half hour of idea there and they kind of stretch it out. Whereas the, uh, the half hour animated series episodes, it's like, hey, that was a nice little morsel of a little space adventure story. I like too that they could have aliens a more regular part of the cast on the on the ship. Yeah, just uh, because makeup's not involved. Yeah. It's just costs just as much to draw an alien as a as a person. Yeah. And the aliens uh that they meet on planets are way more imaginative mm -hmm. uh and weird because the you yeah just draw it. the one that comes apart with little arms coming out of uh, its yeah. waistband. <laughs> stuff, which is super corny and dumb and That's Saturday awesome. morning cartoon, but it was also a good episode. I like Terry referred to himself as this one. Yeah. This one will separate. <laughs> oh, the thing that bugs me about the animated series is how they're like eyeball 
is the same uh, color as their skin. Yeah, but they manage to whiten the teeth. Like they make the teeth white, but not the uh, the uh, whites of the eyes. Yeah, it's, why? Uh, I don't know. They got to cut corners somewhere, and <laughs> I guess pink teeth just look too much like like they're gumming. Well, they're not all pink. Like they have different skin colors. Yeah, like Spock is definitely much more green than Nimoy Spock. Kirk is much more of pink skin than pink skin than Archer was. Have we talked about how ridiculous it is that the Andorians call humans pink skins? Yeah. I mean, and I, I don't know, know if we've, we've talked, talked about, about it on the, but... on the podcast, but yeah, it is funny. This is on Enterprise, whereas yeah. uh, Shran, one of my favorite Star Trek characters, I think, actually. You have a boner for him, don't you? I enjoy him. Yeah. Um, well, he started calling Archer pink skin, mm-hmm. and they sort of call all humans pink skin at... I don't know if he ever met Hoshi and and, and Mayweather <laughs> because it's like it's like what what does he call them? Does he call them pink skin? Well, and I <laughs> feel like yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Do they look that pink? Does does Archer even and well, like Tucker even look that pink? Too. I like, don't know. They're kind of kind of. I'm like looking at your skin, trying to decide whether or not pink skin is an appropriate term, and definitely some of your skin is pink. Yeah, lips. You're a pink skin. Your cheeks. You got pink yeah, skin okay. cheeks. Your forehead's not really pink. No. This baby is pink. Give me some wine, and then I'll pink up. Yeah, pink up. His his skin is much more blue than Archer's is pink. But yeah, maybe really when you're peach like peach than pink. When you're like used to looking at people with blue skin to see then see somebody with even a, even some with really pale Caucasian features, maybe they would just really look pink to you. Like it would be like, whoa, that is a pink skinned creature. I don't know. I feel like a pig is pink. Yeah, but also like peach skin. It wouldn't really work for him to say that. Hey, sort peach skin. Hey, off-white taupe skin. Well, that's ridiculous. Peach <laughs> is not as ridiculous as that. Yeah. Again, another one uh, for Voyager was, was worst is the length and best is the hair. Do you think they were referring to the length of the hair? <laughs> the length of... <laughs> the whole series, maybe? I, I guess. Know, I, I don't guess. Know. I yeah. mean, it's a long time for them to not get home. Yeah. I'm kind of surprised that they, like didn't get home sooner and then have some like adventures at home yeah but i guess there's no way that that crew would then stay together no they'd be they, they would be like debriefed and well there's what and half of them are yeah. mucky oh yeah i guess they would have to go to jail except the fact that they yeah they probably only get pardoned because spoiler alert <laughs> they help defeat the borg <laughs> You just completely ruined the show for me. They must get pardoned at the end. Oh, I'm sure they yeah. get, They don't go to jail. Yeah. Spoiler alert. The hair, though, is the best thing about Voyager? <laughs> I don't know. I guess. Sometimes my hair looks like Janeway's heroine. Yeah. Because she has a bun on top of her head, and mm-hmm. mine gets loosened just the right way. Yeah. It's not a good look, Janeway hair. No. They probably didn't mean... They probably meant Tom Paris's hair. Ew. <laughs> you know what bugs me about Tom Paris? Is when he's like... He gets a little sweaty and his hair kind of gets like messed up a little bit. It yeah, just, it's awful. It just grosses me out. It gives me the creeps. It makes me think that that's what he looks like after he has sex. And I don't want to think about that when it comes to Tom Paris. I think he also uses a lot of moose. The other thing people need to realize is that Kathy loved Tom Paris yeah. when she was in high school. And there's a whole page of my yearbook that says, I love Tom Paris all <laughs> over. Or I'm going to marry Tom Paris. Or I don't even know. Yeah. I know we've talked about that on the podcast before, but it's it well bears repeating. Yeah. <laughs> the next person says, where is the execution? Disclaimer, I've never seen more than a couple of episodes, which seems odd in retrospect. So they probably saw, like, Threshold. Didn't watch anymore after that. What's Threshold? That's the one with the salamander babies. Oh. Yeah. Um, Poor salamander babies. And there's other princess, too many run-ins with Q, which uh, is, is fair. It's interesting because I didn't read it, but a lot of the best comments for TNG related to Q. Or there were some. Yeah. So Enterprise. What What was your sort of your your thoughts on Enterprise? Because we we talked about it in the last few episodes here and there. But now we're done. It. Now we're done. I didn't know I could be more disgusted by a character than I am by Jordy LaForge. And Malcolm Reed has done that for you. He's the worst. He is. He is. I think hands down the worst Star Trek character. He makes me feel like sick and dirty he's awful he's awful and he isn't even and it isn't just like when he's being lascivious which is extra gingy just every aspect of his being 
is he's a icky. He's, 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 he's icky. Just, he's, he's odious. Whiny, he's odious. He, he's odious. Like there's no aspect of his personality or way he approaches any situation or any aspect. Well, sort he of always has this look on his face, like like. What does that say? Like he doesn't but want to be there. His yeah. his mouth wouldn't melt butter or whatever. Yeah, what's the, what's the saying? He has a mouth like a cat's asshole. Like he just sucked a lemon. I don't even know how he got as far as he did in in, in Starfleet because he's just. How could anybody work with that guy and and much less promote him? Well, he probably got. It was one of those people who got like promoted away. Oh yeah, and then his, and then also I guess the the, the backstory was that his. His parents had some pull because they were old Navy family, so maybe they they bought his commission. Yeah, although it sounded like they didn't want it. They wanted him to stay in the Navy and not join Starfleet. Oh but, yeah, right. Yeah. Oh God, who cares? Why are we talking about that icky, odious yeah. moron? But overall, I mean, then there's some like horrible episodes I, and horrible aspects. I wanted to keep watching it. Yeah, no, I wanted there to be another three seasons. I didn't like the whole arc in the expanse, really. The whole thing with the Zindi and the blah, yeah, blah, Yeah, I didn't like the temporal war, but then I didn't like the, the Zindi arc even more. I like just the episodic episodes yeah. within those two arcs. It was good. It was good when it was episodic, like a, like a Star Trek series should be. Well, the more yeah. time passes and the more shows I watch, the more I realize that I really appreciate episodic television. Yeah, well, especially when all we have is arcs. So when... While we had was episodic TV shows, we needed to have a show with an arc, and like Deep Space Nine would be like one of the first and one of the only ones at that time. So of course people love it. It was it was totally unique and was giving people something they don't have didn't have. Now every show is an arc show, so I think it's it. The it arc breeds, better be good. It breeds sloppier storytelling because yeah. in episodic TV you had to tell your story in that yeah in that episode with and an then arc, the arc you, you just. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, sometimes you get halfway through a, a plot point and then it's like, well, oh, this will be picked up in the next episode. When, you know, what do we have to... I it's feel one like of Game of Thrones I've... is really like that. Yeah, definitely. I thought when the a show they did arcs really well was True Blood because it, it was episodic and an arc show. Mm-hmm. And I thought it did the two things at once really well, even though it's like a corny shit show of a crazy cheese fest. But yeah, so it, it, did, it did both. It, it was episodic and arc. And had an arc that would follow mm-hmm. through. Maybe, maybe near the, like the last three episodes would be like very arcish and yeah. less episodic. But I feel like Bones does does a good job of the arc and the episodic. Not at the same time. The same way that it's more of a mix. Yeah, like they have their arc where they'll have like the big bad that'll come in mm-hmm. for every every sixth episode or whatever, and then the final four episodes or something like that. Yeah, uh, then you know, and then it's episodic. There's definitely shows that do it well. And then, but or it's, in different in different ways. But it seems like a lot, of, like anything that's produced by Netflix or HBO is just solid arc. Yeah, it's like basically a mini series or a really long movie split into bits. Yeah, there's nothing episodic about it. You can't just jump into an episode of Stranger Things and yeah. have it mean anything to you, or or just and just watch a little story. You need to know mm-hmm. the before and the after. Which, I mean, it makes sense for Netflix because yeah. Netflix is like the queen of the binge. Yeah. So it's, but now it's, so now again, it's refreshing to have an episodic show. Mm-hmm. So watching uh, Voyager, right, you know, it's like, ah, oh, yes, just a nice little episode. I think that Voyager we just is a great example of a, yeah. I mean, an arc yeah. and an episodic. Because mm-hmm. a lot of the episodes are about getting home. And then there's also arcs within the that big arc, you yeah. know, it'll be like that. Kazon arc and right, yeah, all yeah. those different sort yeah. of arcs. Um, okay, so anyways, for Enterprise, the best is when he jumps into that woman's body and the worst is when Al's hologram breaks. Huh. <laughs> I was really kind of disappointed at no point does Archer, when he gets teleported into some random weird situation, which seems to happen a lot, mm-hmm. uh, he, he, he didn't go, oh boy, when, when he... <laughs> I was waiting for it for like four seasons and they never did it. They even had Dean Stockwell play a character and when, and he, and it was like, he should have been when Dean Stockwell did his big reveal turnaround, she should have went, oh boy, just a little bit of fan service cheese right there. That would have been nice. Or like Dean Stockwell could have been like holding a tricorder and yeah. hitting the side of it to try <laughs> yeah. to get it to work. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Lost, lost missed opportunities. Now, Quantum Leap, is that a show you watched? Obviously. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I watched it too. Remember the episode where he was a deaf girl or there was a deaf girl? I remember that episode uh, existing. Oh, I remember yeah, them doing I 
sign language for quantum leap yeah. and it being like sort of making two little sort of curving jump motions forward with both your hands and then a curving sort of jump motion forward with one hand uh. and being like, I know the sign language for quantum leap now. <laughs> and then like, as time has gone past, I'm like, there's no way that that fucking means quantum leap. <laughs> it probably just means leap leap or something like that. Well, I, <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Yeah. And I just feel like I was lied to. This person says uh, Hoshi and Phlox were the best. Hoshi, eh? Yeah. I feel like that was one note. I mean, I guess if you'd like the note a lot. Yeah. Phlox, I agree with. Yeah, Phlox is one of the top yeah. five doctors in Star Trek. <laughs> I wish we named our baby Phlox. Yeah, almost did. Not after Phlox. No. It's just a great name. It is. And it's a nature name. It's a flower. And this person also said the worst was that fucking dog. <laughs> Porthos. And Tobal being almost awesome. <laughs> she wasn't. <sighs> that was, I, I feel like Enterprise really brought back the creepy sex sexism. They did, and they, they were trying to recreate the uh, Seven of Nine magic, but in a over-sexualized Yeah, but Vulcan the Seven of Nine reason. magic worked in spite of all their creepy sexy times. Because yeah. I, I wasn't really watching Voyager when Seven yeah. of Nine came on, and I was like, fuck that, I'm not watching that fucking show. This is such yeah. bullshit. But it was, she uh, still just played the character, like, legit. And, and spite, Not that yeah. Paul didn't. I don't know, but I think the, the big difference is Jerry Ryan is a very good actor. Jolene Blaylock, not a very good actor. Not terrible, but not, not the same caliber. She didn't quite have the it. That she was really difficult to believe as a Vulcan when, yeah. like, you could still so very clearly see the, like, Hollywood actress yeah. on the screen. Yeah. Like, maybe a little bit of work done, like, you know, well, there's fancy that one episode, fingernails. One episode where she had the, the, the French manicure, and it was like, what? <laughs> that Vulcan is doing that? Like, yeah. It, just, it doesn't was, make sense. Yeah. And you could see the, her, her, like, actual eyebrows underneath the, her Vulcan eyebrows, and it was which was weird. It was like, oh, I guess she just refused to shave her eyebrows off so she could still go out in the weekend or something. Yeah, no yeah. commitment like Leonard yeah. Nimoy having the haircut. Yeah. I was not able to suspend my disbelief around Paul as a character, as yeah. a Vulcan. Yeah. It was all sort of tied into their, the writers couldn't write for Vulcans. They were conflating like suppressed emotion and being logical. It wasn't quite... The same thing as like they, they developed with Nimoy in the original series, and and it seemed well, like over it was time a bit it got more easier to be nuanced with him because of the whole half human, half Vulcan thing. Yeah, but he also the with him the the logic and the emotional suppression was different. It wasn't like, and they kind of got it all mixed up somehow. I feel like in later incarnations of Vulcans, mm -hmm. there are not people who understood philosophy or emotions. And so they don't couldn't really write for that kind of character. The writers, you mean? Yeah, the writers. Everything felt off. Any and the same. Well, with it's like, sort of like yeah. they were like, "Are we writing for Data, or are we writing like it was like?" Yeah, yeah. The Vulcan and the Data are like the same kind of character, you know. Like I think because. But I really felt like they're also kind of just writing like Elrond. Or, or yeah. in Gladriel, and and the sort of like cool detached regalness is not the same as what Spock was at all. Mm -hmm. And and well, I think it's because yeah. they wrote Spock, and Spock, you know, is the original Vulcan, and yeah, part human, so that sort of adds a thing to it. But then they like made Data that character in TNG, yeah. And then I think that sort of weirdly informed how they wrote Vulcans yeah. after that, yeah. That they lost that sort of warmth that Spock yeah. had. Yeah, sort of like they're like, there can be no warmth because they don't have emotions. Mm -hmm. But suppressing your emotions doesn't mean you have no warmth. Like, it was like he just viewed things through this this maze of logic. Mm -hmm. But he clearly, yeah, isn't dead inside, which is how, kind of how they they're tried to make to ball. It was like dead well, and inside. Well, Tuvok is like that too. Yeah. Uh, this person says the worst is the nipple wrist episode. <laughs> worst theme song. All the theme songs. Other so is the best is the dog. Oh, conflicted feelings a... <laughs> about the dog. Yeah. I hate how they make the captains all have this like, like they do this with a lot of characters in Star Trek, but like, it's like they tell you that they have an interest. Yeah. Like and, and water, water polo, polo. <laughs> baseball. Yeah. Shakespeare. Next person didn't like the militarism of the series. Uh, 
instead of it being exploratory. I think we said that at one point. It was like too bad, too bad they're not just going to planets and exploring planets the mm-hmm. way every other they did TOS, a little TNG and yeah a little and it was sort of like that's what they were supposed to be doing but then it never seemed to happen yeah a bunch of them say they haven't seen it that's their answer mm-hmm. Sprint says it got too sex themed true i liked the episode where they were back in time on earth yeah that was a good one i mean there's there's lots of really good episodes in, in enterprise and then there's the like the hoshi uh, Beauty and the Beast one, where she's locked in that castle <laughs> with that guy, and then there's a bunch, there's a bunch like that that'd be terrible. And like season three and four, it seemed like it was he had sort of an every second episode rule. It'd be like shitty episode, mm. good episode, really bad episode, good episode. One person like the exploring the foundation of of like other technology, like the the translator and the teleporter and whatnot. Mm. But they also thought there should have been more cultural barriers because that'd be more realistic, but really yeah. hard to do good storytelling. I mean, it'd be like jalad every time. It'd yeah. Kind of, eh, that would get tiring. It was mine. Uh, I, I like the retconning of, of TOS concepts. Mm-hmm. I, like, I like that a lot. I like the... Uh, why the Klingons don't have bumpy heads. Well, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. Yeah, that was, that, was, that was good. That was really well done, I thought. Not necessarily the best episode in itself, but it was like, wow, they actually pulled that off as not being super like unbelievable. Or, yeah, yeah, like it, it, if you it's hadn't an said, joke, if you yeah. hadn't said that that's what was happening, I don't know that I would have noticed. And the fact that it was from an offhand joke that Worf makes in in that um, Forrest Gump episode of Deep Space Nine. What does he say? They look at the Klingons without the bumpy ridges, and he's like. It was a genetic accident. We don't talk about it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or something. Yeah. And it's sort of like, well, how does that even work, you know, and stuff. And then they actually did a good job in Enterprise of explaining how that worked. They're like, this is what you have to go with. Yeah. You've got Make an jo- episode. You've got a joke made in a joke episode <laughs> that should always not be canon. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah. Um, someone liked the production values, but there wasn't enough women. I'm pretty sure that was me. And a couple and a couple of people liked uh the liked the exploration of the Vulcans being more complex, uh which I think is kind of fair in a way. I mean Well, I, with I, them I, being not just Well, and I think it's interesting that that they're like Vulcans of another time. The yeah. Vulcans are going to evolve between then and now. Which I kinda of felt was them retconning their own like shitty Vulcan writing. Yeah, it was sort of like, wait a minute, these Vulcans are completely culturally different than Vulcans we've seen in any of the later Star Trek, so we better write them finding a mythical artifact and cha- that changes their culture. Uh, I mean, it, it was kind of like the Vulcans being like a big sack of dicks through most of it and not being terribly honorable and, you know, sort of uh, being disingenuous in, in, the, in their uh, negotiations with the... Um, with the blue skins. The Andorians? The Andorians. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, so, I mean, that was all kind of interesting, but that was also a bit Deep Space Nine-y for my taste. It was sort of like, mm. duplicitous dickbag politicians is kind of, I don't... That's not, not why I watch Star Trek. Yeah, it's not why I watch Star Trek. That's why I watch... The news. Yeah, or Scandal or something like that. Or uh, what's that other one? House. House of Cards. House of Cards. Yeah, I'd rather watch House of Cards than see it in space. And again, I felt like that's what made them kind of like the elves. Right. You know, because... And it works in Tolkien, but I felt like making the, the, the Vulcans that was... Made the Vulcans actually, for me, a lot less interesting because I thought Vulcans were plenty interesting already. Right. <laughs> space introverts. So the last question on this was, if you can remove nostalgia from the equation, what's arguably the best Star Trek series? Which is kind of a bullshit question because no one can remove nostalgia. No one can look at that objectively or arbitrarily. Not unless you're Spock. No, or me, because obviously Voyager is the answer. (laughs) Because otherwise the next generation would. Yeah. And for me, uh, uh, pure nostalgia, I would go back to... Might even go back to original series because you're a hundred. Because I'm a hundred, and uh, but next generation, if you had asked me a few years ago, it would just be my knee jerk response, right? Of course, next generation before our rewatch of it, uh, Voyager or of next generation, TNG of both. I, mean, I liked TNG less after <laughs> rewatching yeah. it and liked Voyager a lot more after rewatching yeah, it. Yeah, I know? agree. So, the winner, I guess, we'll go from least. Enterprise does not even register on this pie chart. No one voted. <laughs> 8.7% is the original series. They, they came in last. Voyager, 19.6%. Deep Space Nine, 326 
it just that baffles me how many people like that show. Yeah, but also Trump won an election, so yeah, I, it's kind of a useful filter. I feel like what Trump won an election, so it, everything it, you think is true in the world is wrong. No, just every time I'm like baffled. I'm like, no, the, the data must have been imperfect in some way because there's no way that blah 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 Duck Dynasty is popular. Right. So like, oh well, Trump won an election. You know, it's sort of like it's a good filter to view the world through. Um, is it? Is it? Well, I mean, I, I think it just makes sense of things that don't make sense to me, things that are popular. And, and you know, like, oh, people can't really believe that, you Fair know, enough. people, you know, like people aren't really. Uh, and then 39.1 uh, was next generation only. So that's only, you know, like less than like 6.6 percent better. Yeah. Or something like that. Yeah. That original series would have, would have done a little bit better, actually. Well, that's the nostalgia that people are able to remove. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I the guess. nostalgia I feel for TOS. OK, out the door. Well, then TNG is the best. Yeah, I think that's or, probably what Well, Deep Space Nine. Yeah. Because they don't have nostalgia for it. They're just like, it's just a good show, they yeah. think. But that was still like 20 years ago. I, I feel like people who love Deep Space Nine have not watched it recently. I, and this is what I feel, but I could be wrong. Again, Trump won. Trump won. Here's a further appeal for you. I need supporters for this website, this this simply syndicated dot com thing, this podcast network you've been listening to. We don't have ads, you see, but it takes money to run this and, and keep me willing to do it. So if you go there, simply syndicated dot com slash everything, it's six pounds a month to support us and you get simply everything in return, which is our entire back catalogue of sort of 11 years worth of shows and exclusive content. Alternatively, we've got a Patreon, which is patreon dot com slash simply syndicated. That's a $3 a month support donation, and I've been posting some exclusive content on there as well. Failing that, we actually just have a PayPal button where you can uh, give us a little tip, throw us something in the jar, so to speak, and you'll find the link to that at the bottom of simplysyndicated.com. My name is Jacob. I'm Snark. Your name is Mandy. Snark. (laughs) We're... uh... I was saving my mouth ball until you hit record. <laughs> I can tell. Here's some nice ASMR for you. Uh, yeah. ASMR, ASMR videos have really gone downhill lately because they are now almost all exclusively conventionally attractive young women doing exactly that it's gross <laughs> it, it, it's gross and yeah easy and not effective <laughs> worse now now they all just make kissy noises which is really? not which is not relaxing yeah So it's well, no, not not like that last bit, but we're just like, <laughs> yeah, it's horrible. Yeah, yeah. So it takes a while. So now it takes a long time to find an actually good one. Good one. Just why I now watch shoe shine videos, which aren't even intended to be <laughs> ASMR. I like the in the Voyager intro when you go through the little debris ring around the planet, and it's like. Uh, <laughs> It tinkly, is, it's tinkly. It is nice. <laughs> the his, best his and lip, the worst. His oh, whip, whip lip wetting. Whip letting. <laughs> no, <laughs> lip, lip, lip wetting. Lip wetting. Wetting. <laughs> or uh, straight eye for the gay guy. There's no such thing as straight eye for the gay guy. All right, queer eye for the straight guy. That's what it's called. <laughs> straight eye for the gay guy. Or a rupa. Or a rupa. Or a rupa. Or a rupa. Or a rupa.